Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So what we're covering in today's video is we're going to be looking at statics and we're going to be using or doing some trust analysis using the method of joints and this will be the second part in this series. So we are tasked with solving each member for this truss here, which is only consistent of three members. So this one won't take terribly too long. And as it's stated here, we will use the method of joints to solve this particular truss. So whenever you hear anybody say solve the truss, basically what you're doing is you're finding the member forces for each member of that truss. <clears throat> so with any truss, the first thing you want to do, if it's not given to you, is you want to solve for reactions. That's step number one, is that you want to find your reactions. So with this one, I'm just going to assume that we have a BY upward since it is a roller. Since we have a pin over here, I'm going to assume AY is upward as well. And there are no horizontal applied forces to this truss. So I automatically know that A sub X is equal to zero. So all I need to do is find BY and A sub Y. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sum moments about point A equal to zero. And that will give me BY. So I'm going to have the 1800 pounds, it'll be rotating clockwise, and that will be negative based upon my sign convention of counterclockwise being positive times its perpendicular distance to A, which is four feet, and then plus B sub Y going counterclockwise about A times a total of 12 feet equal to zero. And then B sub Y pops out to be 600 pounds in that upward direction. So I know this reaction over here is 600 pounds. And then what I can do is I can sum forces in the vertical direction or sum forces in the y direction and get ay, which would just be 1800 minus 600, which has to be 1200 pounds in the upward direction for a sub y. All right, so now that I found all my reactions, using the method of joints, I can solve for each of my member forces. So utilizing the method of joints, basically what you're going to do is you are going to look at one joint at a time. So we're going to look at one joint at a time. And we're only going to concern ourselves with what is connecting into that joint or what kind of forces are acting on that joint. We do not care about what else is going on anywhere else in the truss. We only care what's going on at point A. So starting at point A, what I have here is I have an unknown horizontal member and I have an unknown diagonal. A diagonal will always consist of a vertical and a horizontal force. So can I solve for anything here? Well, I have two unknown horizontal forces and one unknown vertical force. Well, looking at A, what I have here is I have 1,200 pounds upward. I have two unknown horizontal forces and an unknown vertical force. Well, if I have to have equilibrium going on at joint A and I have 1,200 pounds going upward, well, I need 1,200 pounds going downward to cancel with this one that is going up at the reaction. So what that means is that this vertical has to be 1,200 pounds in the downward direction. Okay, so what does that mean for my direction of this member? Because this member is either going to be in tension or compression. So we're either going to have something that looks like this, where it's in tension, or we're going to have something that looks like this, where it's in compression. Well, these arrows relative to joint A have to be going in the same general direction as your horizontal and vertical components of that diagonal. Since this, di or the, since this diagonal contains a vertical force that has to be going downward, the arrow relative to A, or nearest joint A, has to be going in the downward direction. Well, this one is up and to the left, so it can't be this one. This one is down and to the right, so it has to be this one. Thus, this member is pulling on joint A, so it is in tension. So that means that my horizontal component with diagonal has to be going to the right because this arrow is down and to the right. <clears throat> so how do I find that horizontal member force? Well, we can utilize this ratio for the diagonal, which is the x dimension of the diagonal divided by the y dimension of the diagonal must be equal to the x force inside that diagonal over the y force inside that diagonal. So this ratio must hold true. So for this diagonal, what's my x dimension? It is four feet over my vertical dimension, which is three feet, is equal to whatever my x force is over my y force, which is 1,200 pounds. So if you were to solve for this x force dimension or this x force value for this diagonal, 
the X force for this diagonal pops out to be 1600 pounds. So that means that this is 1600 pounds here, and that is going to the right. So to find the, the actual force inside this diagonal, we would just square each of these, add them together, then square root them because it forms a right triangle here. And we would get 2,000 pounds here. And this arrow is pulling on joint A. So that means it has to be pulling on the opposite joint as well because this signifies tension. So we just solved member AC. So sticking with joint A, now we can look at AB because back down here to the original picture or the original little summation here, we've summed everything in the vertical direction. Well, the horizontal direction, now we have 1600 pounds to the right. And the only other force that can cancel with this is the AB force. So it has to be going to the left 1,600 pounds to cancel that. So we would have 1,600 pounds here. This is compression because it's pushing on joint A. So it also has to be compression at joint B. A member force for a truss cannot change from joint to joint. And then the only way it could ever change is, is there if there is another force acting on that member. So we have two out of three solved. So let's go down. And let's look at joint C now. Joint C, the only other thing that we have to do is find members in BC. Well, what do we have going on here for joint C? Let's change color to green. Well, we have 1,200 pounds. Oh. oh, come on, erase it. We have 1,200 pounds. And that'll be in the upper direction because now we're looking at this arrow. So that'll be up and to the left. So it'll be 1,200 up and then 1,600 pounds to the left. And you could erase these really quick. And then we have this 1,800 pounds that is being applied. Don't forget your applied forces and your reactions. And then I have an unknown vertical and an unknown horizontal force acting for BC. So what would be the easiest thing to solve here would be the 1,600 pounds to make that an equilibrium in the X direction. So since we have 1,600 pounds going to the left at joint C, we need another 1,600 pounds that will be going to the right to cancel with the horizontal acting from AC. And since this one is to the left, this one will have to be going to the right. Well, the only option there is up and to the right. So that means that my vertical force has to be going upward. So does that make sense? Well, yes, it does. Because we have 1,800 down, 1,200 up. I need an additional 600 up to cancel with that. So I would have a 1,600 and a 600. So if I want to get that true member force, I would just square each of these, add them together, square root them, and I end up with 1,708 pounds. So lastly, let's finish off the arrow direction because this is pulling on joint C, so that's in tension. So that means it has to be pulling on joint B and tension as well. Now with trusses, there's always a way to double check that you have all your forces because technically we have all our forces on here, but let's just double check. And the way you double check is you look at the joint you did not use. So I have used A and I have used C. So now let's look at joint B. Does everything cancel and be in equilibrium at joint B? Well, let's find out. Well, I have 1,600 going to the right here for the horizontal member. And then I have 1,600 going downward here for this arrow that's down and to the left. So those cancel in the vertical. What about, or cancel in the horizontal. What about the vertical? Well, I have 16, or 600 going up here. And then I'm going to have 600 pounds going down here. So they all cancel in the vertical direction. So I know that I've solved this truss correctly. Now, if you haven't done your, if you haven't solved your truss correctly, those final points at your final joint will not be in equilibrium. You will have something off there. And that's how you would solve that particular truss using the method of truss. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problem solve this variety, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you've done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us out. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.